This debate gets brought up occasionally on Biz. We're gonna look at why the stock market is a zero-sum game, and then we're also gonna use that to explain why it's not a zero-sum game. So they're asking if the stock market is just a Ponzi scheme. When I make money from the stock market, am I actually generating new wealth in the world, or am I actually just taking somebody else's losses? That's the question, right? So a company has an IPO, and just for simplicity's sake, let's say there's one share, and they sell it for $100. The company now has plus $100, and the investor has $100 less from where he started from. So it's plus 100, minus 100, add it all up, that's zero. Say, wait, 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 what if the price goes up, so investor A sells his share to investor B for $150. Investor B then sells it to investor C for $200. So after the game is played, the company has plus 100, investor A has plus 50, investor B has plus 50, investor C has minus 200, because he hasn't sold yet. Adding this up, you get zero. It doesn't matter if the price goes up or down or up and then down or it doesn't matter. So this is like a poker game with your friends. The whole poker group as a whole doesn't net any money, but you just are shuffling money amongst yourselves. So this brings up a good point. Is the stock market just a Ponzi scheme? Is the entire world just a Ponzi scheme scam? where we borrow money from each other and borrow money from the future? Is there any actual wealth in the world created at all? Thermodynamically, there is wealth created. We get a continuous source of energy from the sun. The free money from the sun makes the whole uh, world as a total a positive sum. It's like you buy a solar panel for a thousand dollars, it soaks up $300 worth of free energy from the sun and then you now sell that solar panel for $1,300. You're not stealing from anyone and the wealth in the world is increased. But it still remains from that earlier calculations, the stock market is a zero sum game. But that's also ignoring two things. It's ignoring dividends, which not every company does have dividends, so you can ignore it in some cases but it's ignoring dividends and it's ignoring the claim that you get to the company's assets in case the company goes bankrupt. So dividends make the game a positive sum because the investors get that money from the company and the company gets that money from the, the real world making real profits. But still, even if there's no dividends and even if the company keeps running forever, you can still say that it's a positive sum game. I mean, of course, it depends on the price of the stock being accurate. You can't just go up to a million dollars. All right, so let's say we have this company, and this company is basically just a bank account, and none of the stockholders have any access to the bank account. The company has an IPO. They get $100 from investor A. Let's say then that the company makes a $50 profit. The company gets $50 coming in from the outside world. So now the total amount in the bank account is $150. So investor A then sells his share of the company to investor B for $150. So now if we tally it up, the company has $150. Investor A has plus 50, and Investor B has minus 150. And the total when you add this all up is $50. Positive, non-zero. So even though this company does not pay a dividend, even though the owners of this company have no control over the company, they're still able to extract out that $50 in that bank account. And this is just calculating the pure dollar amounts, not the net worth. If you look at it in terms of net worth, you'll see the company has 150, right? But the company doesn't own this $150, it's just there. The person who owns this $150 is investor B. Nobody else owns this money, so the stock market's not a Ponzi scheme. It's a way for you to abstractly put the company's money into your own pocket. 